It's late morning. It's two degrees above zero Fahrenheit. We got a lot of corn to haul. It's supposed to warm up today. It's gonna be windier than heck, but there's a bunch of pheasants. At least it's supposed to warm up a bunch. So we're gonna get the trucks going, get those moving. I got Jim coming out in a little while. I guess we'll get some stuff done. Step one, always my favorite job. We haven't run these trucks for several weeks now, so we're gonna check all the tires. Got a brand new Milton tire pressure gauge here from, actually from one of you, one of the viewers sent it to our PO box, which was very, very thoughtful, very nice. Unnecessary, but very thoughtful, so thank you. The bad part is though, I can actually predict its future, and I can tell you it's gonna go bad, because they all do. I hate tire pressure gauges. 18 of them per truck. We got one tire that's low, the right front outside on the truck. You gotta use a lot of descriptive words when you're trying to describe a single individual tire on a semi. It only needs about 20 pounds, which can sound like a lot if you're used to a car, but these tires take 100 pounds, so it would have been all right. All good, I'll do a quick oil check here, then we'll fire it up, get it warming up. Check traps on the truck, or the trailer, make sure they open. And you can pull this outside where it's windy and cold. Oil's good. Belts look good. Don't see anything leaking. Maybe I'll check the water. Yep. I'm gonna hope this is the one with the disconnect. It's not. It's not. I know this is gonna shock you guys, but the battery is completely dead. Not even a light. How could this be? Usually after sitting for three weeks, they start right up and it's no problem, especially if they're parked outside. But it's when you, when you use them for a day and you bring them in, they sit overnight, then they won't start in the mornings. That seems more common, but here we are. Oh no, little fella. You all right? Just taking a nap, all tuckered out. I'm gonna take it, take that to the clinic, would you, Anna? Thank you. A little dusty under here. We're charging. Luckily, I have 18 other tires to check in the meantime. Are you talking to the dog? Yeah. What's she saying? She's saying you're over here. <laughs> that I'm over here, huh? She's right. Morning, Jim. Morning, Zach. You ready to do this cold shit? I am, but if you can believe it, the batteries are dead on this one. Yeah. What's, uh, this one hasn't had a problem before, has it? I think they all have problems. Wow. Well, yeah. We got three low tires over on this corner of the truck. Really? Yeah. One's pretty much flat. The other two are just down 20 pounds. That surprised me. Well, tires are good on both of them. Uh, tires are good on both. Good. Oil's good on both. Said the tarps and traps move on both. Yep. Uh, we got a, we got the scan cards for both. Yep. Yep. You want to fire up the Pete? Yeah, fire. See if this will fire too. We could try that too. Yeah. You just take it easy, okay, dog? Oh, she went. Sounded like it had to push a little bit. I was nervous it wasn't gonna go. Radio. Yep. 
When it's this cold and the grain leg hasn't run for a couple of weeks, the belt inside the grain leg gets kind of stiff, so we're going to run that pretty slow, kind of like a garden hose, I guess, or any other belt or rubber. It just it gets stiff in there, and you can hear the cups that actually carry the corn. They'll clunk when they come around in certain spots, so make sure things are loosened up there. We're going to load this truck pretty slowly to start with. Moving. Moving to it. That one's on, that one's on, that one's on. It's impossible to keep the snow out of here. The wind comes in between these bins and you can only do so much, which is pretty much nothing. Alright, fire up. Look at that. At least it's windy out here too. Okay, you can roll. Right there. Figured we'd start up a second auger here. But I can't open it very far because those cold belts, the first time I tried, they quit spinning, which is a bad thing. They're supposed to spin all the time when it's turned on. Oh, okay, you can roll just go six feet. I'll have you just put them in that third hoop. At least where I'm standing here on the ladder, I can get out of the wind. It's actually pretty nice, and all the dust is actually going out the yard the way that we want it to, so that is, that is handy. All right, you can pull it around up to the shop, and we'll check that antifreeze level. He had the stop engine immediately thing coming on for him again. But I topped it off with antifreeze last time. That should have fixed it. I don't know. Look at outside the yard. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but how hazy it is in the distance. That wind is just ripping that snow up and spreading it around. But I'm pretty sure we're up into double digits now. I'm actually sweating a little bit. Anna, your face is all frosty. How'd that happen? We need some red antifreeze. Only got about a quart. That isn't gonna do much. It's not too low. No. Well, Jim got going. I did find a little bit more red antifreeze in case we need it, so that's good. We will see if this beast is going to start yet. I see it's still taking quite a charge. 200 amp. Changing 200. No. Wow. Okay. Oh no, what's that about? Charger going bad? Shouldn't be a connection issue the way it flashes on and off with nothing moving. Uh oh. These big heavy manual chargers are good chargers too. Maybe try a little impact technology. No, I'm not kicking the charger with my steel toes. Yeah, I'm kicking the charger. I did get it holding for now, but it's making me nervous. Something inside this box is not making good contact all the time. That kind of sounds like some sort of a fire hazard, so I'm gonna go grab the other one that's over in the other shop. Or I could just use this one that's already over here. Even our battery chargers wear out from extensive use. As long as I'm waiting for Jim and for that truck to charge, I can't load that truck right now. So I'm gonna get this out of here, pull the tracker out, make some room to stack some pallets later on here. By golly, this thing started. Yeah, I had the battery charger on it at 10 amps all day yesterday, but it's, it's, it still started. It's windy out there. We'll let that 
run. I'm gonna go close the garage door because that seems to be open for no reason. <laughs> um, then I'll check that clip. See what, what were we at for moisture and test it? Nice. Okay. Didge, did you come down here to tell me the garage door was open? That's a good dog. This way, she says. Come this way. Honestly, I love spending extra money on LP anyway, so it's fine. This is the 482nd time my wife has left the garage door open this winter. But whatever, it's her money too. She can spend it the way she wants. If she wants to spend it on heating the garage, that's fine. Isn't that right, Spiro? Shuka, shuka, shuka. All right, you can roll. What do you think, Anna? You want to come up here, up the ladder? No? It's actually pretty miserable back here, especially when I got to take my gloves off for you guys, for the camera. I'm going to quit doing it so much. Okay, you are full. No rush on this one. I'm going to run to town and actually go to the license bureau and get some overweight permits for these trucks. When the roads are frozen in the winter, they allow us a 10% over permit, which means we can load those trucks quite a bit heavier, get more bushels in them, ultimately, you know, make less trips. So saves us money and time, but you got to buy the permit. So I'm going to go to town and get that for all three of these trucks. Well, that other one charges here more. 22 hatches and even uh, putting some offers in the 20. Got him. Well, hopefully Jim wasn't waiting too long. He didn't go home anyway. Shouldn't have been more than five or 10 minutes. And he got the second one up and going. I think the wind went down. Seems much nicer out here. You are good to go for another one. I'll have this other truck loaded when you get back. As long as we got plenty to haul, Jim's not here at the moment waiting on me. May as well get this one going too. It snows a little deep back here. Oh, huh. Well, that's the bin that we know the motor is sketchy on, but it was running, so I was hoping to get some out of there, but we just gotta get that motor rebuilt or replaced. How do I get over there? I'm gonna scratch that bin idea for now, because if I remember right, that one's got a lot of centers in it, which are usually higher end fines, and right now I'm just trying to get going on stuff. I don't wanna have to worry about blending those off. One more down. Neighbors are gonna borrow the tractor and a big rope here. They got a hog farm about a mile and a half up the road. Apparently the feed truck cut the corner a little bit and got stuck, so they're gonna head over there with the tractor and the great big Yankum rope and pull them out. I'd love to run over there and show you guys what those Yankum ropes can do, because I know it'd be cool, and plus I kinda wanna see it anyway. It's a full feed truck, or dang near full. Kinda rocked over in the ditch. But it's not our circus, not our monkeys, so I kind of feel like I'll just borrow them the stuff and they can handle it and I'll stay away instead of advertising it in front of a few hundred thousand people. Now, if this thing would start, I'll back it out of here, stack our shelves, get it back in, get that third truck going. It's a little slower today. I've only got Jim running trucks so that I can handle some of this other stuff right now. Alan was coming out, but I called it off on him because it was getting late with that third truck or that second truck not wanting to start. This thing never seems to have an issue. It's really handy how they build these things so you can park whatever you want underneath them.
I think it's gonna be a lot faster if I just do it this way. Beautiful. It's effective and efficient. In the meantime, Jim was back and swapped trucks, so I got another one to fill. The neighbors came back, brought back the tractor and the rope and said, pull the right out. Good deal. Tell you what, if you guys have never used a rope for the guys with heavy equipment or even just pickups out there, Yankum makes several different size ropes. They got metal shackles, they got rope shackles, which are really handy for wrapping around just about anything without having to have steel on steel. They got a, they got a kinetic energy, they call it, so they stretch and they add a little pull once you get them stretched out. I'm, I'm telling you, those ropes work really well. There's a link down below. Check out the Yankum link down below. Well, I get this other truck loaded. Well, the wind definitely went down quite a bit, and it must be, I don't know, maybe mid-20s out here. It's not too bad. There's your Central Minnesota weather report. And another one full. The reason we're hauling in now in the winter instead of waiting until summer, which sometimes we do it the other way, we haul in in the summer, um, is because of what the market wanted. So the local elevator was paying a really good cash price, meaning their basis was narrow, meaning the difference between the Chicago contracted price for, uh, for the contracted months that we had was narrow. So we get paid better to haul it now because the elevator said they wanted it now. So we contracted this corn uh, periodically there's multiple contracts here within all these bushels that we're hauling but we contracted it uh, over the last probably about six weeks or so we're bringing it in now it kind of just it's not like we're on a schedule as far as hauling goes we just sell when it makes sense we've got we've got actually just about everything in the bins right now hedged on the on the board of trade which means we've got positions on it we've got it priced all we're waiting is to set the local price which basically means the basis, which is the difference between our local price and the contracted price. It's, it's simpler than I just made it sound once you really understand it all. But basically, whenever we can get the best money to bring it in, that's when we bring it in. Some people don't like to haul in the winter because it's a little bit miserable. Um, some people don't like to haul in the summer because it can be a little bit miserable. Some people haul when they need the cash. Um, it, it just... Everybody's a little bit different. Everybody's got a different situation. You know, not everybody's got this much grain storage, um, depending on what you've got for acreage. You know, if we picked up some acres, we wouldn't have enough storage to hold everything either. Another thing that has a big effect is local markets. You know, you don't have to go far up the road sometimes to find a, a different ethanol plant or a feed mill or an elevator or a different end user that's gonna need corn or soybeans worse than the next guy 40 miles down the road. So. There's a lot of different variables that come into play. Jim's back, back again. I gotta plug that other truck in, so hoping I can start it in the morning, but I gotta fix this end. I'm not gonna put those on because then I'd have a double mail cord. There we go. All right, now looking at the time, I'm gonna try and get one more truck loaded and get one in myself down to the elevator. And we'll load two more, put them in the shed, and be ready for tomorrow. All right, another one full. I'll bring this one in. Five to seven. Damn. I took off with the Kenworth to get one more load there, so when you get back, you can just park that one under the uh, leg and I'll load them both up tonight. Yeah, of course, I'm good. Uh... Oh no. Someone cut the corner there too. It's a little tough when the ditches get all drifted in and you don't know where to clear the snow and people start finding the edge. Some of you may notice that this is not the ethanol plant or one of the ethanol plants we typically haul our corn to. This is actually the local, one of the local elevators right up the road, 10 miles. They wanted the corn worse, they were willing to pay more for it, so they bought it. 
I noticed the sign said wet corn. Jim told me that earlier today too, but this is not wet corn. That's, they, this, is, this is the pit they sent us to. Huh. Shoot. I didn't expect this. I guess I'll go on TikTok. I'm on there now. I fought it for a while, but here I am. Pretty. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna load these next two trucks here, shuffle a few things around in the shed, get these trucks in the shed, and then I'm gonna go eat supper and sit in the hot tub. Trust me, I'll stick to my word. Where the heck were you two? I saw you out there in the field up to no good. Hmm? Where were ya? Another one loaded. That's it. That's the last one for the day. Now I just gotta get everything in the shop. No, I didn't buy a Jeep. One of my buddies is a mailman and he needed a uh, heated space to thaw his Jeep out overnight, so there you go. There's just one last thing I want to get in the shop for tonight, and if you watch my Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, you'll probably get the joke. That's right, I'm gonna bring the lawnmower in. This thing had a starter or a connection issue or some sort of an issue. It would not start the last day as we were packing things in before a snowstorm. And I wasn't worried about the old lawnmower with many hundreds of hours on it sitting in the yard because we still had a million and a half dollars worth of actual equipment out in the yard. So I got all that put away. By that time it was like nine o'clock at night. I wasn't that worried about this thing. It got snowed in and I've allowed it to continue to get snowed in. People mentioned the Razor 170, the little Razor that was sitting at the end of the driveway way out there. I brought that in a long time ago. You guys can forget about that. This is literally the only piece of equipment, other than that one truck back there, because we don't have room inside for all the trucks, but at the moment, this is the only thing that sat out all winter. So I'm gonna put that inside just for you guys. You're welcome. You know, you could've put the bucket on and moved the snow around and for, I know. Mower's stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> that is, that is up there with some of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. I bet the battery's dead. I think we'll just park it on top of the floor drain for the night. Well, that's it. We'll let everything thaw out in the shop. Be back again tomorrow. And uh, I'm gonna go in the house. Sounds like I'm in charge of supper and I need to make scrambled eggs, which I can do. I'm good at, I'm good at making scrambled eggs and I love them. And then I gotta keep my hot tub promise. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. <laughs>